many appearances for Everton? 207. 207. How many goals? 72. 72 goals. So that'll be the equivalent of what nowadays? Lukaku. <laughs> I'm going to ask Jimmy a few questions and we'll do the, 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 the idea of this interview today. Um, just having a little catch up and me and Jimmy were talking the other day and I was quite fascinated. Um, it's, it's nice to speak to someone obviously you know, playing back then uh, and also fascinated about the change. Um, obviously it's a huge change. What was, what was the year when you stopped playing? Uh, 1965. 1965. So obviously there's been huge transitions since and it's fascinating for me because some of the stories which we'll talk about in a minute which Jimmy was talking about um, it, it just it makes me sort of realise, and I want to get the message out to the young players nowadays of actually how lucky they are uh, with all the resources, the same facilities, and uh, the stuff that they don't really have to do outside football. So Jimmy will, will talk about uh, what what went with his lifestyle at the time. But uh, one of one of my sort of things I'm trying to vision is uh, is a typical pathway to professional football in them days. So from being a kid. You know, nowadays it's obviously grassroots and then it's academy football. What was the what was the age in the typical pathway then, starting off from young up? Well, we would start at the uh, junior school at uh, under 11s. Yeah. And uh, I went to Woodchurch Road School where I was captain. Uh, you played in the... Uh, under 11 league in Birkenhead. Then when I left there, I went across the road to Temple Road, just by Tramier's ground, where after a season I was uh, in the team and the following year I was captain. And then I played for Birkenhead Schoolboys, where I was captain again before I went for trials at Devon. Oh, right. so, so was that young when they were picking players up still? Well, they picked players up in that in that era when they were fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So what was the what was the typical structure back then in terms of the academy? Like how many how many days would you train or No, no I Obviously, I know. was serving me time and going to Everton two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday. Getting home here about quarter to ten at night. Early to bed Friday and playing for Everton and C team on on the Saturday. Is this what when you were sixteen? This when I was sixteen. So when you when you when you left school? Yeah, it went on till I was eighteen. And then I was called up and posted in Germany for two years, so I didn't get any football here at all. And then I come out of the army at uh, at twenty. I had uh, 12 months of my time to finish as an apprentice printer. Plus, just about got into Everton Reserves and finally went full time professional footballer when I was 21. Wow. So, one of the things I talk about a lot um, is, is about patience. And you know, you get kids 15, 16, 17, 18 being in a rush. You know, imagine, imagine back then, mm. with all you know, having to go and do national service, and, and you you mentioned about you know your father was big on the education side, the, the uh, getting a trade and yeah, getting a trade, yeah, wanted yeah. to work. My education wasn't that good because with the war breaking out in nineteen thirty nine, I was five. There was no teachers because they were all uh, they were called up. There was yeah. no, there was only the shipyard workers who. Uh, Got away with not going in the forces. Yeah. Be a shock nowadays for some of these young ones, wouldn't it? It would. <laughs> it would. <laughs> when you come out the army? I was started in the A team again, and then uh, uh, it was short of a centre forward at Skem. Skem was daily with the top of the year. Uh, Liverpool County Comp and I scored four against Skem and I didn't look back from that day. Happy days. Mm. So, so what was your, your your position Jimmy? Centre forward. Centre forward. How would you describe yourself? 
fast shotting, good shot in both feet, not bad in the air, and was very fit. What was it like in terms of, you know, outside football? Obviously you had all these other responsibilities mm -hmm. with the army and stuff, but in terms of your conditioning and, and your resources to actually keep fit? Well, they were just things uh, just pick up I own. did in Germany. Uh, cross country running and uh, athletics were. Um, I was in the uh, BAOR team and um, that took a lot of my time up be besides um, looking at it as a waste of time being there instead of getting me Everton practices under. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Multitasking. So you're using and that's another thing I always say, you know, something you're doing rather than just ticking a box and being there, take something from it. Yeah. For your debut season. You're not like you fifty five. Fifty five, how did that go? First season, Everton? Well they they lost um <clears throat> They come up in 54, 55 and just about survived relegation and they lost, they won one game at the last nine, the following season, uh, 55, 56, they lost the first two games and I was full time pro then. Uh, now he'd come into the first team, took Hicks in his place and I got brought down for a penalty at Burnley, we won 1-0 and we won at home, I scored against West Brom and the, uh, the uh, run in the first team started and I played 41 um, on the run and the following season played the first two and did the hamstring and never played again till Christmas. Oh really? Stayed on for an hour with it. Fuck you up. No physios back then? <laughs> there was physios but there's no subs. <laughs> no subs? <laughs> subs started about 1967. Crazy. Because there was no uh, there's no subs in the World Cup final, was it? No. When we played Germany at Wembley. So your first season then, how many goals were there? 21. 21, top scorer? Mm. Brilliant. And I played for under England under 23s as well. England under 23s? Mm. 23s, how'd that go? I scored, we beat Scotland 3-1. First game? First game. Brilliant. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so time at Everton went really well. Um, thirteen years. Thirteen years. I'm the third, third oldest living ex-player. Third oldest living ex-player. Sorry, what was it? In in the past forty fifty years. Um, one thing is uh, as well. Obviously, the, the uh, I don't know what your view is on it nowadays. The wage, the wages that um, that the players are getting. I just, I just can't believe it that they get so much. But uh, television has, has done all that, and it's got uh, stronger and stronger. There's more of it on the television now than there's ever been. Mm. So uh, they have poured billions in, in into the sport itself. It, yeah. What was the typical wage back then, then? £20 a week. £20 a week. £2 for a draw, £4. £20 a week, £2 for a draw. And uh, what did you get for the goal? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> no, no. It was a team game in them so, days. So imagine nowadays to agents out there or directors of people negotiating contracts with top strikers who, who've got the potential to score 70 goals in 200 games in the top league. And when you come to do the contracts and it's a, uh, what's the goal bonus? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. But you were sold, wasn't you? Mm. 
I was sold for 20,000, yeah. See, now that, to me, because that's still a fair bit of money. Yeah, but we got our benefits out of that. I nearly completed 10 years, so they give me 10 years, which was uh, 2,000 quid. So uh, I got 2,000 quid and then a little bit of bartering with Birmingham to go there. I got another 1,500. All right, I'll see that. Under the table, that was tax-free. So, <laughs> tax <-free. laughs> so it, was, uh, it was a good move. Yeah, happy days. Yeah, because when I see now, I thought it's it's you, you don't really, and I, I suppose as well nowadays a lot of players go for free, so um, some clubs at all don't don't pay any fees, um, so the fact that the wages are so small, but then there's a, there's a twenty thousand pound transfer fee involved, mm. was, was quite fascinating as well. So I, I didn't cost Everton a penny. Happy days, good bit of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what was a typical just before we move on to Birmingham? What was a typical training schedule? Uh, every day. Um, Ten would arrive from the ground. It had to be jet changed and ready on the coach quarter ten. Start training at Belfield West Derby mm. at uh, ten o'clock. And go through what you were going through the practice match or whatever was on the day. What time would you be finished by? And then we'd come back to Goodison, get showered and changed, uh, have dinner, lunch there, and yeah, the afternoon off would start about half past one. Just a quick one on that as well. I know, I know it's, it's it's a bit in depth, but. When you say have dinner, lunch, what was what was the the, the sort of procedure okay, back then yeah. days with, with the with the food and the yeah, nutrition? Yeah, De decent dinner, yeah. Was but, it? but it it wasn't uh, itemized like it is now and mm. all that. It's just mm, chips, eggs, chops. Yeah, yeah. And then a sweet, and that was you for the oh, day. Yeah. All the old school nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> and a beer. <laughs> no beer. <laughs> what about? Um, the lifestyle outside football then? Yeah, Beauty Queens. Beauty Queens. Miss England. We've got a few pictures of that, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at them in a minute. Miss England and... Uh, so was that little bit of, was that celeb li lifestyle still? You know, what was it Was it about then? So you mix some football with, you know, I don't know, music, like you say, models, which, you know, did, did they socialise together or... Yeah, no, I was single right through till I was about 36 when I got married. But, yeah. um, uh, so you, you, she's had fun. She had fun, yeah. <laughs> there she is. Who's this one? It's Roberta Brown from Liverpool, Miss Liverpool. <laughs> Going back to time in Everton, bought for twenty thousand pounds. No sold. So you, you, you were sold for twenty thousand, bought by then. Yeah. Um, Someone went to you. Time at Birmingham. What, um, what, what level? Sorry, I've just on that. What level? So obviously Birmingham then. In terms they were in of the first, they were in the first division. Yeah. Decent. Yeah. Just good decent, team. Birmingham. Decent move at the time. Um, Got me most probably my greatest achievement at Birmingham. That was in the Intercity First Cup semi final against the European Inter Milan. Inter Milan? Beat them there. I scored two in Milan. We beat them 2 1. Wow. Oh. And we beat them in the return game at, uh, at Birmingham 2 1. I, so I scored the four goals against Inter Milan. Brilliant. Got beat in the final by Roma, unfortunately. Claims the fame there, though, into Milan. There's been there. James Harris, a very fast centre forward whose ability to strike a ball with even foot meant he scored many excellent goals for the club and was an integral member of the League Cup winning side in 1963. His curly hair 
dashing approach made him stand out very much. <laughs> Is that where that picture come from then? <laughs> what a one. So Birmingham, how many years? Four. Four years of Birmingham. It's mm. led you up to what age then? Well, 33. 33. So coming to the end of your career then? Yeah, two years as old. Coming to the end of your career back then, obviously, it's something which, which I spoke to you about the other day in terms of extra structure, aftercare, you know, nowadays you've got <coughs> uh, the PFA and, you know, and, and support for, for footballers and they go on and do the coaching badges or they get offered other roles at clubs. Anything back then? Nothing. Obviously, it was very... Vauxhall's Vox, waiting for you. Vauxhall's, that's it. 25 years. Just got your final uh, PF Fay money with your union rate will come to about nine hundred quid or something. That's about all. About seventeen years. Seventeen years as a pro. As a pro. Yeah. So then on to Vauxhall's. What about any stints coaching or? Yeah, I was playing manager of Ellsbury Park for two seasons. All right. Um, in the West, in the Cheshire County League, yeah, he did all right, and then did a bit of coaching at Tramia. No, oh, yeah, when uh, Derek Manfield was a uh, coached him for a couple of seasons, and then uh, Kingy got the sack. And, but Kingy's men then got the sack, which was I was one of them. So that was the end of that and more or less the end of the football career then. But a touch of golf then, so <coughs> went back down to the golf course of Trenton. Yeah. And uh, finished up playing off three. He was a good golfer. Oh. Very good golfer. That's a couple of things I wouldn't let I think. On the top. Mm. That's the football league couple one with Birmingham. Well, what, what, what's your vision looking back now when you see the way it is and do, do, do you feel like oh, do you, is it sort of the door just shut does it does it make you a bit sad that you can't would you have liked to have carried on or well Everton uh, <coughs> do us alright they, they provide a, a complimentary ticket for the home games which I go to fair play and, um, so you're all an Everton fan I am an Everton fan, yeah. I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> I don't know uh, But uh, we didn't have that programme when I played for Everton because they were in the second division yeah. for five, eight years, weren't it? Yeah. They went down in 54, come back in 61, 62. And uh, Shagley brought them back. We uh, played them in... Uh, in the Liverpool Senior Cup game, that's the only one I can really remember. We, we beat them 4-3. Four th four yeah. That was home and away, Goodison. So uh, that was me. Uh, occurrence with Liverpool was they, they were just second division we were first, fortunately. <laughs> How things have changed. <laughs> what was your thoughts on the weekend? <laughs> Did you watch it? No. <laughs> no, I was in Liverpool actually. You what, well, you weren't seeing the parade? <laughs> Grassroots kids as well, they were trying to make that jump. I, th um, I think you, you you don't start realising that you've got to put all the work in yeah. up to your about 15, 16. And then start be ready for the push between seventeen and twenty. See how good you're gonna get. Yeah. And be very dedicated from that age right through. Yeah. Maybe I was just lucky that everything fell in for me, but I had the skill and the uh, the strength to play at first it's division it's football it's from the start. And I had 10, 12 years and, and 
chakras go go chakras na strong lad is me and Duncan Edwards remember scored that was against Man U at Trafford is me and Bill Fouch from Man U Tommy Lawton uh, Ted Sager Billy Coop me Uh, a friend of somebody's, Dave Vixen, Norman Greenall, Eddie Wainwright, Joe Mills. That's a strong one, I don't know. So just rounding off, Jimmy, just a couple of couple of quick questions. Best player you ever played with? Best player I ever played with? Bobby Collins. Bobby Collins. Anthem? Yeah. Best player you played against? Or toughest? Johnny Carey took me and him. He wasn't keen on locals, Johnny Carey. Like to bring the Scotch lads down. Uh, no, we couldn't recommend them. Couldn't recommend them. Uh, who's your favourite player nowadays? Uh, favourite player nowadays. Who do you like? Which, 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 which? Brilliant, Jimmy. Right. Been a pleasure. Okay. Hopefully we can stay in touch.